Uh, welcome to this final video on setting up the Joyce Wave Fusion 3. Uh, we still need to set up the jib boom, and I do this slightly differently to the instructions. I like to use wire in the forestay, and I make a sling to fasten the jib boom to the boat. Firstly, I use fishing wire to make the forestay. I swage one end of the forestay to the jib boom, and then cut a length of cut the length of wire to go through the luff of the jib. I thoroughly clean the wire using isopropyl alcohol and then carefully insert the wire into the luff of the jib. I then swage the other end to complete the forestay. Perhaps this contravenes class rules, but as I said, I sail in a social group only and not to race. The sling to hold the uh, jib to the boat is made using a jig that I designed and 3D printed. I have put the STL file on Thingiverse and the address is shown. I use a slightly heavier cord to make the loop using the, the jig uh, it's tied with a reef knot and then two hitches for good measure. The small drop of super glue binds the knots together. The sling is then looped around the boom and adjusted so that the knot is against the boom. A thin piece of string is then looped through the sling so it can easily be threaded through the eyes into the retaining hook. The next step is to attach the sails to the mast and spars, but before doing that you may want to add some vinyl logos or images to the sail. I did this to hopefully make the boat easier to pick out, but in retrospect it does not make a whole lot of difference. Perhaps a different colour choice would have been a better option. However, if you are going to apply a vinyl image, do it before you attach the sails to the spars as they are much easier to work with while the sail is still flat. Fitting the sails to the boat is quite straightforward. Just follow the instruction booklet. After assembling the mast, start by threading the main luff clips onto the mast. These can be a bit tricky to fit to the sail, but just take your time and a pair of long nose pliers just might help. Install the mast crane and then attach the head of the mainsail to the crane. You can then attach the foot of the main to the boom and then rig the downhaul. I turn the section of the vang assembly that takes the two bearings upside down. Now this is easily accomplished um, and it requires you to undo two screws and nuts. I find having the small hole at the top makes maintenance of the boom much simpler. Also, uh, my Focus 2 was actually supplied this way. The next step is to attach the forestay and jibbler, noting I've already attached my wire forestay. I will skip most of the rest of the rigging as it should be straightforward. Once completed, just insert the mast into its step and rig the sheets and backstay. A tip when rigging the sheets, uh, the loop used to connect to the fishing snap should be no more than 10 to 15 millimetres in diameter and make sure the knot itself is small enough to easily fit through the eyes. The boat should be now ready to go. On sail day, I insert some rolled up paper towel into the hull. I also put tape over the balance lead plug before connecting the battery and placing it in its compartment. I then seal the hatch with PVC tape and then blow through the drain hole to ensure it is all airtight. I make a point of putting the rubber bung 
in the loop on, on the on off switch. Um, this will hopefully mean that uh, I won't forget it before I launch the boat. Rigging is quite easy with uh, there being no side stays and the sling is the most difficult thing to thread. Sheets and backstay are quite easy to fit and then you are ready to sail. After sailing I wash everything in fresh water and dry it off, especially around the hatch. I then remove the plastic tape and the battery. It is a great feeling to be able to remove the dry paper towel from the boat after four hours of sailing. My approach has ensured the boat remained watertight since I have owned it. Previously I used this approach on my Focus 2 and achieved the same result. I still sail my Focus 2 occasionally. I hope you have found this series of videos helpful and informative. As I said, I do not claim to be an expert, nor do I claim my approach to be the best, but it is certainly effective. If anyone has any questions on any part of the videos, I will try to help. Just leave a comment below. Thank you. To sum up, I think the boat represents exceptional value for money. It is fun to sail and able to be to comfortably handle winds speeds up to 15 knots or more. If the wind gets much over 20 knots, uh, we don't sail at all. Where I sail, the winds can be very light and fluky, especially when blowing from the shore. The boat handles these conditions quite well. The boat is easy and quick to rig with no side stays to worry about and I can highly recommend the boat. On the downside, you need to prepare the boat carefully and ensure it is watertight. I think Joyce Way should have included a hatch flush with the deck and not just a stick on hatch. The main boom on my Focus 3 had to be extended by 10 to 12 millimeters to sufficiently flatten the sail. My Focus 2 boom was actually about 8 millimeters longer than my Focus 3 boom.